If you've been paying attention to the US car market, you know that most buyers think SUVs and crossovers are red hot, and station wagons are the lamest thing since Crocs. But then again, Subaru has had a lot of success selling cars like the Outback and Crosstrek to Americans, suggesting that maybe some shoppers recognize the inherent practicality and all-round goodness of a traditional wagon. Volkswagen wants to get in on that market with this, the new Golf Alltrack. It's based on the Golf Sport Wagon, but it's raised up a little bit, it's got black plastic body cladding, and it's fitted with all-wheel drive as standard. The idea is to take on, well, Subaru, but also other compact crossovers like the Honda CRV and Toyota RAV4. So the question is, can the Volkswagen Alltrack make wagons great again? How does it look? Well, not like a crossover. This is still a station wagon at heart, albeit one that's been raised by 0.6 inch and fitted with lots of black plastic fender cladding. But it looks cool and rugged and tough, in the same way that cars like the Audi Allroad and Volvo Cross Country models pull off the raised wagon look. Mostly though, you get the smart, handsome design elements that are common to every version of the 7th generation Golf. In other words, the Alltrack looks good from every single angle. How's the storage? Just like the regular Golf Sport Wagon on which it's based, the Alltrack is super spacious. Even with the rear seats in place, you've got plenty of room for suitcases, dogs, mountain bikes, maybe even all at the same time. And when you fold the rear seats down, you get a whopping 66 cubic feet of storage space. Now that's not quite as much room as you'd get on a Honda CRV or Toyota RAV4 with the back seats down, but it's very competitive overall against other compact crossovers. There's not a lot of space for knickknacks. This center console cubby is on the small side, and so is the tray in front of the shifter that houses the USB port. But there's enough room to carry bottles of water or cans of delicious bubbly water in the cup holders or in the door pockets without issue. Is it roomy? There's a lot of leg and headroom up front, and the seat's really easy to adjust to find a comfortable position. One thing that's weird though is that the recline function on these seats is powered, but the fore aft and up down adjustment is still manual unless you get the top level SEL trim. There's enough space in the back too that an average sized adult like myself will fit without issue. How does the interior feel? The Volkswagen Golf family in general makes use of really nice interior materials, and that carries over to the Alltrack. From the leather wrapping the steering wheel to the really precise switch gear, to this trim on the dashboard and the nicely grained plastics all around, it's just a lovely place to spend time. Everything works really well and it looks great. I also really like the visibility, it's really good. You get these little cutouts in the A pillars that just help you see a little bit better around the front of the car. Is it well equipped? There's lots of standard stuff on all models, including a backup camera, roof rails, heated front seats, cruise control, fog lights, an off-road mode for the all-wheel drive system, and LED interior lighting. Moving up to the SE and SEL trim levels net some extra goodies, like the panoramic sunroof, 18-inch wheels instead of 17s, automatic climate control, push-button start, and so on. Option packs also add adaptive cruise control, pre-collision warning, and a self-park feature. Perhaps the only thing not available on the Golf Alltrack that I'd want to see on my cold weather crossover is remote start. How's the infotainment system? Volkswagen infotainment systems have really improved in the past few years, and this 6.5 inch one called MIB2 is great. The built-in functionality is quick, responsive, and easy to use. On the SEL model, there's even a mode to show your angle and elevation and other off-roading data. There's also connectivity to Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, though it's worth noting this doesn't have multi-touch, so you can't do pinch to zoom on the maps. Is it a good daily driver? Perhaps the only issue with the way this car drives is that the 1.8 liter turbo 4 engine kind of only feels adequate at times. So it's great in other versions of the Golf or the base sport wagon, but this Alltrack is 360 pounds heavier than the base sport wagon. So there are times, especially when you've got passengers on board, that 170 horsepower feels like enough, but not an excessive amount of power. The other thing to consider as a daily driver is that the Alltrack is meant to go through anything, anywhere. 
What I mean by that is that because the suspension's lifted, because it's got this special off-road driving mode, you can make it through snow or down dirt roads or gravel without an issue. Those are some of the reasons that you might be tempted to choose a crossover SUV anyway. In the off-road mode, that adjusts the traction control, the ABS, the throttle, and the transmission. I know you probably don't think that this thing can really go off-road. It's only lifted by 0.6 inch. But when I drove it through some trails in Washington, I was really impressed with how much it could scrabble over dirt and through little streams. Is it fun to drive? As I mentioned before, the Alltrack is not the quickest vehicle around, so it's not fun in that sense, but it is really fun to drive in pretty much every other respect. Because it drives and feels so much more like a car than an SUV, I actually enjoy driving this through twisty winding roads. It's a great compromise because you do get a lot of the utility of an SUV or crossover, but you don't have to really give up that fun to drive aspect of, say, a normal Golf hatchback. How's the fuel economy? This is perhaps the Alltrack's biggest failing. It returns just 22 miles per gallon city and 30 highway. That highway figure isn't awful compared to other all-wheel drive crossovers, but some of the rivals do much better in EPA city testing. Honda's all-wheel drive CRV returns 25 city and 31 highway, for instance, while the four-cylinder Subaru Outback, which is a little bit larger than this Volkswagen, achieves 25 city and 32 miles per gallon highway. How much is it? The Golf Alltrack runs from just under $28,000 to almost $34,000 for the SEL model. Next year, when the six-speed manual transmission is available on S and SE trims, those cars will be $1,100 cheaper than the respective DSG models. What are the negatives? No matter how much people like me try and convince them otherwise, there are still some shoppers who are going to look at the Alltrack and think it's dorky because it's a station wagon. And as we touched on before, the fuel economy isn't fantastic in this really competitive segment. And finally, if you do need all-wheel drive in a practical package like this, you can now get the regular Golf Sport Wagon with 4Motion as an option. Who should buy it? The Alltrack's perfect for anyone who needs a roomy and practical vehicle that won't break the bank. Of course, it's going to be great for outdoorsy types who are going to strap kayaks to the back and go driving down dirt roads, but it'll also be fine for families who need something spacious and don't necessarily want the same boring crossover as all their friends have. What I really like about the Alltrack is that it's so much cooler and more stylish and better to drive than a lot of those alternatives. In fact, at Motorwall, we like this Alltrack so much that we're going to keep it for a year. This is Motor One's first long-term car, and over the next 12 months, we're going to bring you regular updates on everything we do with it, what it's like to service, and how much gas it uses. Stay tuned with everything that happens with this car over the next year at MotorOne.com.